All right, guys, welcome back. In this story, we're going to see how we can connect Apache NiFi to Azure SQL or the offering of Azure SQL DB. So first of all, uh, you're going to have to have a Microsoft Azure account. It gives you about $200 in credit, so you can use that to explore, play with it. So for this demonstration, what I'll do, I've created an account and I'm going to create an Azure SQL. So let's go ahead and create it. So first, Obviously, you're going to navigate to your home directory and then either type Azure SQL and he will, he will bring the resources here that you can select from them or you can choose from the main menu like I saw it. So right now what I'll do, I'll say create a resource. You can click on this one or you can click on the plus button. It will walk you through some, um, let's say, offering for service. So for this instance, we're just going to use the SQL database running a single database. We're not going to choose the Elastic Pool or database server. Uh, it's not going to be a SQL managed instance. So let's go with this option. Here, we're going to choose a, uh, a subscription. And in the same time, you have to provide him with the resource group. Uh, basically, it's a resource. Of co it's a collection of resources that share the same lifecycle permission at we're not going to go into this detail. I already have a resource group created. It's called test, obviously. And we're going to provide the database with the name. So let's go ahead and call it test NiFi, obviously. And the server name. In this case, we do not have a server name. We're going to have to create one. So click on the create button. And here we're going to say server. Um, we can't use this special character. We're going to call it server NiFi. Right, so make sure you take note of these values for your reference. But at the end, you see he will give, you, give it to you all true up. Let's leave it like that for now. Select the region that you are. Uh, I am in Australia East, so I'm going to select uh, this option. And we're going to use the use SQL authentication in our case. We're not going to integrate it with AD nor both. We're just going to use this one. And here we're going to create a user and password. So I'm going to call it uh, admin underscore NiFi, right? You don't have to remember this name. It will be provided to you later on. But this is really important. I, you need to remember this. So I'm going to take my secure password generated, copy and paste. And then I'll paste this one onto another item here into my notes. I'll have it on the side for a later connectivity purpose. Okay, cool. Done. Uh, next, press OK. And let's go to the next thing. Choose yours. Um, want to use Elastic Pool? Let's just skip it as now. What is interesting about it, once you select your server, he only gives you an idea of how much it's going to cost you more or less a month. So this is fairly okay. You know, considering I have $200 in credit, that's no problem. Um, the compute storage, um, you can change this one to give it less storage, I assume. But for now, let's just leave it like that. Backup strategy, let's just go for local redundant and let's move on to network. In the network, we're going to say that this is going to have to be consumed via, via public endpoint because obviously my consumer is not going to reside in the same network as this database at this point. So let's, collect, let's uh, select public uh, endpoint. The firewall rules allow Amazon services and resources to access the server. I'll say yes. And add current IP address. Basically, the current IP address of my local host will be captured and set in this networking access rules. Uh, connectivity policy, connection policy. Let's just leave it as default. And let's now go to security again here enable and defender uh, i'll take a hard pass on that nope and the encryption on the other stuff we're not going to enable it cool now we don't want to use any backup for our startup the collation is going to be the same maintenance i don't really care uh, next create a tag if you want to maintain this database and you want to play with it it's good to tag them later on you can create a script to, to check your resources and obviously it's easy for billing later on. So you can see who's consuming more, where did you lose money on your infrastructure, but we're not going to do that for now. Next, create and review. Uh, basically, review and create. Just look over the information. What's important for me right now is this one. So uh, it's pretty good. 
let's create. This might take probably a couple of minutes, you know, uh, to return. So what I'll do, I'll take a break and come back when this is ready. Great, so now our deployment is complete. It took a couple of minutes. So what we're gonna do now, let's go back home and look at our resources. Navigate back home. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna see our deployment and go to resources. Basically, the resources is gonna give us information. Great, so now uh, I like this interface. I'm not a big fan of uh, Azure, I'm an Amazon guy, but I like this interface. The reason that being is like, you can go to connect with or you know, you go to information about how you can connect your application with, so, or configure access. So let's go to, let me go back so because so, I just clicked on it. You wanna go down here and connect to an application. So you have multiple options. You can go Go, PHP, I don't know what's PHP, but that's fine, ODBC, JDBC. So this is what we're gonna look for. If you see here, he gives you the entire connection string, which is really nice. It, you don't have to look for it. You don't have to break your head around. You don't have to stress about it. And if you see here, he provides a placeholder for your password. That's why we save the password. And at the same time, he gives you a direct link to the JDBC driver that you will need to use. So let's click on this one. Uh, this one will take us to a new page. And I want you to go down to actually click on this download JDBC driver that will take you to another link and download this one here. Download JDBC driver 2.12.2 at this point in time. All right, now let's go to it and let's open it. Great, now this guy opened into a folder. You wanna to navigate to it and this is the driver that you wanna use. In my case, I'm gonna use uh, Java 8. Uh, and what I want to do here, I want to capture this information. But now, uh, let's leave it here. What are we going to do? Let's disconnect uh, using this connection string and this information from um, database UI that I have installed. So I have DV visualizer installed. What I'll do here, uh, I'll create a new connection and I will use the wizard. From here, I already have the name Azure and I already selected the SQL Server. JDBC driver. Let's go next. It's going to ask us some information here. The local host, what we need to provide him, it's this value here, the server value. The port, it's all the same. The database name is the one that we just uh, choose. So it's going to be test NIFI, right? Uh, and the user ID. Remember, in our case, we put uh, what's the user admin NiFi, and that super complicated password that was generated by my password generator. Great. Now let's ping the server, and we got a success. Let's click finish, and let's connect into it, and let's explore a bit. Um, Great, this looks great. So we got, we got access to the viewer. We can see we don't have any table created. So this pretty much looks exactly what we need. We managed to create a database and we get connectivity from our local host. Great, now next step is to allow NiFi to connect to this database. So this is the next step. Let's copy this particular string, you remember? Let's go to NiFi now. So I don't know what's your experience in NiFi, but probably that's why you're here because you want to see how NiFi connects to SQL Server in Azure. We're going to use an execute SQL processor for this task. Double click on it. So if you haven't, if you lost this part, go here to process it. Drag on on the canvas. Just type execute. Execute SQL. Double click into it. Go to properties. And we can select. A dummy query for now. So let's say select one us call. Right, so let's leave that as it is. But the most important part, we have to create a database connection pool. So let's go ahead and create a new service. So I already have another one which is old, but let's go here. When you when you select this option here, probably you might not have any. So you're gonna go straight create new service. And let's say uh, let's call this one demo Azure DBC connection pool. Great, you can click create and then you get this arrow. 
let's go to it will ask you if you want to save say yes save it will take you to this particular connection but right now you see he's like okay i don't have the connection rule i don't know what the driver class name so you need to provide me all that information first what we'll do you remember we copied that connection url paste it in and we have this long connection string here right this will suffice what i'll do next i'll replace this placeholder uh, curly brace with my password but in the same time i'm not going to rely on in, only on this because i don't know if nipi will react well with it i'll save it and i also put the password here so i know i have a password here and let's go and capture the username as well from here so what was it admin nifi say okay uh, we got the password that's already filled in by the way all of this <coughs> by the way all of this information can be parameterized there's, there's some stories that i've done in the past where i show how the parameter context can be used to pass this information that it's secure much better than just put it like this in text this is against against best practice i wouldn't do that in a production server this is just to test connectivity now the driver class name so and the driver class name is not as straightforward as i expected when you go into the documentation like if you go here you might take some time to find it well, initially i was like oh this is it but no it's not i had to google it so it, it took me a bit of time so what i'll do i'll apply on this one and jump into my previous connection that i created and take a sneak peek there i'll copy it from there so the driver is this the driver class connection is this one I'll put it in the description of the video for you guys to copy and paste it. Uh, so I copied this one. I'm going to go back to my controller because it took me out of it. It took me to the main one. All right, cool. Let's back into the configuration. Paste this sucker in. So make sure it's there. And now the driver location. Remember when we unzipped that he sent us to a particular location? So what I'll do here. Um, I'll make my life easier. I'll open this into a terminal uh, and do a PWD. If you're on Windows, you got to make sure you give him the full path. It's backslash D, all that, all that jazz. Um, I'm going to go back here and paste it in. Going back to the terminal, do a list and make sure I copy the name of the jar. So in my case, it's going to be Jerry 8. Great. Click OK. And that's about it. There's nothing else to configure. We set up the connection URL, the database driver class name, the database driver location, user and password. Click apply. Ideally, you want to see this clear. You don't want it to get any, any errors or stuff. Click enable. And we're good to go. Let's go and give it a, let's go and take it for a ride. Let's add a new processor here. Basically, we're going to forward the outcome of this execute SQL. He requires a fail connection and a success connection. And let's run it once. First one is going to take a bit of time. That's what I observed. So, bear with me. Okay, so we got a success. This is really important. Uh, probably didn't return nothing because the query I give it is like a dummy. So you can see it returns us an arrow specification that's called equals one. But now let's actually read data from the database. So this is, I'm going to do a quick demonstration how I'm going to jump into this particular SQL um, database. And I'm going to create a table. So I'm going to say create table uh, ABC with uh, column one of type integer. All right. So he's executing the, the command. We're going to go here and do a refresh. You can see we have a table. It's A, B, D, not A, B, C. All right, so let's go insert some data in this table. Insert into A, B, D. Where is it? A, A B, D. Yeah. Values. Uh, since we have a call one, we're just going to give it a value of integer of uh, 999. All right, now let's do select. 
from ABD. Oh, that's such a weird table name that I gave you. Right, so we get a result back. Now let's go back into the same in iFi. That's the whole shtick. Enable NiFi to consume data from Azure database. Run it once. And like I told you, first time is hard. The second one is really quick. So it took literally nothing. If we go and see here, we look at the payload of the second query. And there you go. All right. So this is a wrap of our tutorial. How you connect, an Azure, how you go and create an Azure SQL DB and then connect NiFi to it and start doing operation. You can use all kind of strategies to migrate from Azure to Mike to to local to as to Amazon, whatever you want to do. All right. Good luck with your NiFi project. And if you have any questions or if you're in doubt, feel free to join our Discord channel. There's a link in the description where you can ask whatever you want. And I'll do my best to help you guys as much as I can. Cool. I see you guys in the next tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe.